Full share and welcome to Air Rider. My name is Ben. Today we're going to be doing a long term review on my BMW F800 GS Adventure. This is a 2013 model. I've currently had it for around three years and uh, I've been maximizing its potential with the, uh, the latest um, videos I've been producing on my channel on YouTube. For those that uh, aren't aware of the channel, you're welcome to have a look. I make travel videos uh, around Ireland and highlight locations of interest. Um, so if it's something that you'd be interested in, please uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to make sure that uh, you're updated with any new content that comes out. Um, just in relation, I'm not currently uh, sponsored by anyone. You might see BMW, well, I've got a BMW jacket, BMW shirts. Um, so this video isn't sponsored. So I hope to give you some insight. I'll highlight some features on the bike. And um, oh, there's one or two things that are some dislikes, but uh, overall the bike's been fantastic. Um, I've been riding BMW motorcycles for the last 10 years. Um, and I started with the G650 GS, the single cylinder. Then I had an F700 GS, uh, and now I've got the uh, F800 uh, GS Adventure. I currently have a website, www.airrider.com. There's some information there on my past histories. I've got an excellent gallery of some of the photos when I was living in South Africa. You'll see some photos there, as well as Ireland. I've been updating it as well. But uh, let's uh, crack on with the review. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, hit me up with the, the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. And uh, like I said, consider subscribing. But we're going to get stuck in with this review. And uh, let's, let's, let's start. How you doing, everybody? Uh, so we're going to do a 360 view uh, around the BMW F800 uh, GS Adventure. Um, I'll highlight some points as we go along. Um, and I'll talk about some history. So in 2013, uh, the bike was uh, introduced to the market. Effectively, the 1200 GS uh, Adventure, they were looking for something to kind of fill that gap because there was no adventure bike uh, below the 1200 GSA, and there was obviously a substantial amount of money required uh, to get one of those bikes. So what they did was they made the F800 GS to kind of fill that, that, middle, that middle gap, um, and obviously I presume to probably gain more sales because not everybody could fork out the money that the 1200 GS Adventure was going for. So uh, what this did, this enabled uh, a few things. First of all, long range fuel tank. The standard bike had a 16 litre fuel tank. This, uh, this was boosted to 24 litres, which obviously gave you enough range then to go and see places further. And obviously you wouldn't have to fuel up uh, as much. They also strengthened the rear subframe of the bike, obviously to carry uh, a heavier load as well. Um, other, than, other than that, the bike is quite similar to the regular F800. So we're gonna go around the bike and I'll pinpoint things as I go along. Right, so we're gonna take a look at the front of the bike. We can see the stance here. You have, obviously have the inverted forks. Uh, the suspension travel is superb on these, especially when you're going off road with them. Um, it's a true uh, adventure bike when it, it gives you the capability of doing that off road and on road. This particular one had the travel pack or what they, I think there were various names for the packs. Um, I bought this bike fully loaded effectively or everything. So whoever bought the bike originally added everything to it and I've done a modification myself, which I'll go over shortly. You've got the auxiliary right, uh, lights there, which are just fantastic. I've tried them. They illuminate the road really, really well. You've got a 21 inch front spoked alloy, uh, alloy wheel. <laughs> you've got the 21 inch uh, spoked uh, wheel and obviously you've got an inner tube. Um, on some of the other bikes, the F700 GS and of course my G650 uh, GS, they had alloy wheels and obviously it, there was no, uh, essentially there was no need for a tube. Uh, so that's the one thing I've had to adjust to and it's probably one thing I don't necessarily like because I have to carry inner tubes with me or some would prefer to carry a uh, repair kit and obviously re repair it on the road. So that's probably one thing I don't really like but unfortunately it's one of those things I have to deal with. So in my top case I have a full set of inner tubes just in case of a puncture. Uh, the tyres on this bike are the Michelin Anarchy tyres. So uh, you'll see the dual disc brakes, uh, 300 millimeter dual disc brakes. The stopping power on this bike is just fantastic. As we move on, we've got our LED indicators uh, on some of the bikes and some of the, depending on which country you're in, um, some bikes don't have the LEDs and some do. So on some of the, um, this one's been, as I said, this one's got the full kit on it. I like the LEDs, it gives it a nice clean look. You've got an LED tail light, it makes sense to have the, <laughs> it makes sense to have the, uh, the LED indicators as well. Now I had the OEM standard headlight on this and that's the modification that I've done on the bike. I've since replaced it with an LED unit, which makes it a lot more modern looking and fresh. Cause one thing I really didn't like 
which to me didn't make sense, was you've got LED uh, auxiliary lights, and then you had a halogen light in the middle, and then you've got LED indicators. To me, that just made no sense. They should have just brought out an LED option straight away, at least made it an option, and you could have upgraded the bike. Simple as that. But anyway, I suppose LED lights in 2013 weren't, uh, they were fairly new technology, but um, that's the upgrade I've done here. And I'll, show, I'll put it on for you shortly. Um, so we've got our standard, um, our dipped beam, uh, high beam, and then there's an LED daytime running light. The standard crash bars on the F800 GS Adventure, you can see them here. Um, I've done nothing additionally to it. I've never, I haven't added any more, any more crash bars to it. And it has the skid plate underneath there, which is just a plastic one. You've got the radiator for the water-cooled engine. It's a 798cc, uh, 85 brake horsepower uh, engine, and it generates 83 newton meters of torque. The torque is more mid-range, which means, particularly when we take it off for a drive, you've got fantastic mid-range torque on this. It's probably one of the favorite things I like about this bike. The luggage racks come standard with the GS Adventure. Some of the, uh, on some of the crash bars, for instance, we've got obviously our luggage, our luggage rack that we can see here. There are some scuff marks that we can see, and we can see it there as well, and on the body. But one of the downsides that I've noticed myself, obviously it's quite a high sitting bike. The seat height on, this, on the standard seat, 890 millimeters. It's an extremely high sitting position. However, the comfort level is very good on it. This is the comfort seat on the uh, BMW GS Adventure. So it's super comfortable, especially for those long journeys. And of course, there's a passenger seat as well for your pillion. Now, the reason why I've got these scuff marks is I've dropped the bike a couple of times. And that is primarily because of when you're on loose gravel like that, you've got the high seating position. Sometimes you're on, your, you're on the balls of your feet trying to sort of steady the bike. All of a sudden, your foot goes underneath, the bike goes down. And it's an extremely heavy bike. It's 229 kilograms. So you try and hold 229 kilograms while the bike is obviously leaning to tip over. There's gonna be almost zero chances that you're gonna try and catch it and adjust it back up. So most times I've gently put it down and that's the reason why we have some scuff marks on this bike. Mounts like so. And like I said, one of the, uh, one of the toughest things I've, I've had where I've dropped the bike was, was the level, uh, the level surface. When you're on a bike, and you're in a new place and you know you've put the bike in sometimes the bike stand is going to almost be vertical the bike's almost going to sit vertical and sometimes it isn't but it's another thing you just you just got to remember that because normally what i do is when i when i get on my bike i thrust my weight to the right because i'm expecting i've got to tip the bike up and unfortunately that one day when i dropped the bike is it was the bike was actually straight so when i got on the bike i immediately threw my weight to the right the whole bike obviously uh, was off at center, immediately started dropping to the right hand side. I tried to recover. Unfortunately, I couldn't recover. The bike itself is in exceptional condition for a bike that is nine years old, uh, approaching 10 years next year. So um, one of the adjustments that, or one of the things that they added to the adventure bike was an adjustable brake lever. And what you can do is you can just push this up, push this down, and it gives you a slightly higher angle to uh, rest your uh, your foot, uh, your rear brake, and it's just quite simple to add on, and you just flip it up, and then you've got your generic lever there. That's obviously your adjustable uh, dampener for the uh, for the rear for the rear spring. This vehicle has the uh, electronic suspension, which I'll go through shortly. This one's been fitted with a mud sling, uh, which would have been an extra at the time. So that's been added to this bike. The swing arms on the F800 and the GS uh, and the GS Adventure are the same. They are different from the F700, which means that there is more travel on the F800 and the GS Adventure. So something to remember if you're going to be doing a lot of off-roading and you're considering an F700, the rear, obviously the front suspension is different. You've got your standard um, uh, front suspension system versus the inverted, uh, the inverted forks on the front. And then you don't have as much... Um, uh, the uh, the movement for the rear swing arm is slightly different as well. It's 170 millimeters on the F700 and 215 on the F800, so quite substantial. Spe spe specifically, if you're going to be doing some off-roading, uh, the rear the rear tire here is a 17 inch. Um, it's a 150/70 R17, and that's the Michelin Anarchy. I was just talking about the rear. So you've got an LED a rear uh, brake light and rear lights. You've got your LED indicators on the left and right. I've got the BMW top case, 
which has been great. It's aluminium. It adds uh, just that little bit of more space. Unfortunately, with all the tools that I've got to carry, though, it eats up a lot of the space here. So what would that mean? That would probably mean a, a luggage system is probably required. Stock exhaust on this uh, on this bike. Uh, I have not changed it. Uh, again, a spoked alloy wheel at the back with a tube. We, we got a good uh, view of the side of the bike again. That is obviously your uh, gear change lever. And then the nice wide foot pegs just enable you uh, to stand up nicely when you are um, standing up on, on trails. We come around again, obviously we've got the BMW handguard systems and we've got the standard F800 GS uh, screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the uh, lighting systems, uh, just so you can see the difference between LED. Um, obviously if you've got a OEM, the standard uh, halogen, you'll notice the difference straight away. Uh, one of the things I wanted was effectively this daytime running light, just to give it that modern look in relation to keeping it fresh with all the uh, other models out there. Obviously with that, uh, that there, it gives me that kind of look. And what it'll also do is it'll de-age the bike substantially. Because the halogen light system, I just think is really too old for, for a bike that still looks fairly fresh. And for me, it's a much more efficient lighting system. Um, I haven't tested it that much uh, at night, but I tell you what, when with the auxiliary lights illuminated, you're easily gonna see a massive difference. And it's probably something I would uh, recommend anyone who has the standard F800 GS or the GS Adventure bike, consider upgrading it to the LED version. Now, obviously there are a lot of manufacturers out there. This is, the, I bought this from uh, Kemi, Kemi Moto. Um, and so far I've had it on the bike for nearly three years, roughly give or take, maybe two and a half years. I haven't had a single issue with it, um, but that's the LED. So what I'm, I'm gonna do next is, uh, Let's put, put the main put beam on. on. You're going to start the bike, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We've got the bike in neutral at the moment. There we go. And that is the lighting system then. So you've got your LED uh, normal, normal beam, your daytime running light, and I'll put the high beam on for you now. take a bit of a further look away there and you can see the lighting system so if you had the uh, standard OEM headlight all you'd see is a yellow light it wouldn't have any distinction um, properties in relation to the way it's laid out that to me looks fantastic I like that nice and modern keeps the bike looking fresh Just a, a couple of things in relation to the bike that I've uh, just recently replaced. I've replaced a, a lot of the uh, sort of nuts and bolts on it because there's been a significant amount of surface rust because we're in Ireland and obviously we're very close to the sea. So that's probably the only thing you'll notice on a couple of, on, particularly on the, de uh, the brake discs here, you might get a bit of corrosion here. Again, not necessarily anything to worry about. Probably when I replace the discs here, I'll get them to replace the, uh, the bolts. I try to get them out myself and it's extremely tough and you end up stripping them. So I've just left it as it is. I'm not too fussed about that. I have replaced uh, these two here um, because they, they, they did look quite bad. Um, what you might find, there might be a bit of rust around here. And again, I've just tidied that up with a bit of sandpaper. Uh, we come around this side. I just recently replaced this nut here. Um, again, a lot of surface rust and again, these two bolts and you'll see um, the surface rust on those, on those screws, but again, uh, nothing to be too concerned about. We'll take a look at the back, to, uh, the back disc now, and uh, again, you'd, you'd see uh, something. Similar. Looking at the rear disc, so obviously we have our ABS unit uh, rear disc single. You can see the amount of surface rust to build up over here. I did uh, essentially order new bolts here that I was going to put in. Unfortunately, the wrong ones arrived. Again, I didn't bother with it because eventually I'll probably have to replace the disc, and then I'll get a new disc, new bolts, and we'll get it looking nice and nice and fresh. I recently had to respray the center stand because the center stand again had a lot of surface rust on it here, around here, just looked uh, untidy. So again, it was very easy. I just used a bit of sandpaper, got a bit of black satin paint, and uh, it's it's great. The chain lube, um, I use a lithium a lithium chain grease, which I've been using here. It's a very sticky stuff, uh, a very sticky uh, chain lube that I use. Uh, so far, I haven't had any issues with it uh, at all. So again, I've just stuck with the same uh, the same chain lube.
All right, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, the, the instrumentation cluster shortly. The transmission on this is a six-speed transmission. Right, gauge cluster, so ignition on. You'll see the manoeuvre do its thing. Now you've got info on this side and you've got mode on that side. Because I've got the travel or the adventure uh, pack on this one, I've got the enduro mode. So one thing you'll, you'll see there is you've got road. And then if you wanted to switch it to enduro, uh, you would let it flash on that side there and you'll see the enduro mode kick in. Currently, I've got 25,420 miles on the 2013 bike. Um, you've also got your gear change indicator. I use this all the time. Fuel gauge is on the left. It's measured by half a tank. And if it's above that, you'll see there's a little arrow there. Temperature gauge is on the right-hand side. Rev counter, and of course your speedo. Left side here, we've got our computer, indicators, info, which would give you your fuel consumption range, temperature, and your average speed. On the uh, later um, systems, they've got a tire pressure monitoring system as well, which feeds into there, which I had on the old uh, on, on the F700 GS, my 2016 model, which was great because then you could see the tire pressure. So it's a matter of just updating your tire pressures as you uh, as you see fit, uh, which I thought was a really good system. The system itself. Uh, is I mentioned that this bike has the ESA, your electronic um, suspension. And it also has your ABS and your ASC, which is your um, stability control. The stability control, I've felt um, a couple of times, I've been uh, sort of riding a bit too fast and you come around the corner, well, there you go, there's a stop street not far down the road. You engage your brakes. What's nice about the stability control is it'll obviously adjust uh, the power of the bike to compensate, as well as it'll also apply the brake to kind of steady the bike. I've felt this twice and I'll tell you what, it, it's mind blowing. Uh, the safety features on this bike. I'm a firm believer, a believer in safety. It's another reason why I bought the uh, the BMW back in 2012 uh, because of the ABS feature. Um, I've been in the motor train for a long time and for me ABS is an important part um, of the functionality of either a bike or a car when it comes to safety. And um, obviously ABS, I've experienced it a few times when you've really got to grip hard and then you can feel that ABS just constantly kicking in and uh, it's a fantastic feeling. I know on some of the older bikes, a lot of people disengage the ABS. I see the benefit to that. Some others might not see the benefit. So um, it's it's down to every other individual, but I'm a big uh, fan of ABS and safety systems. But the stability control on this, on this bike is just fantastic. I've experienced it and it's brilliant. Okay, so we've got our um, high beam is over there. Your information systems we've gone through, obviously your um, hazard lights, your ABS disabling and obviously your traction control. Auxiliary lights for the front, that's your indicators and obviously your horn is on that side. I've put an adaption there for my phone so I can see my um, screen whenever I'm doing my um, satellite navigation systems. Great, and that's my uh, GoPro mount. On this side you've got engine start, stop, and your mode is for your road and enduro mode which I'm going to go through now. And then you've got heated grips, two levels. Uh, um, you've got two levels for the heated grips, you've got warm and you got hot <laughs> okay let's talk about enduro and road mode with this system here when you're going off road you can obviously change to an enduro mode and what will give the bike a little bit more flexibility with uh, with the electronics that are on the bike i've done this once um, i haven't used it many times off road because you're, you're, we're in ireland here so there's not that much opportunity to take a bike off road however Carrick Heel, I'm going to put a link up in the top right, it was my first video on my channel. I took the bike out there, not expecting to go off-road. And uh, the tarmac ran out and it was all gravel. On the initial uh, ride up to Carrick Heel, I left it in ABS mode, I probably should have changed it over. I came to a very um, steep section where there was, a, there was a turn as well. I did make a separate video for that, I haven't released it yet. Um, I guess, I, I suppose now that I've done the review on the bike, I might. Let me know if you'd like to see that and I'll explain this section of the road. Uh, it's quite funny, but let me know in the comments down below if you've watched this far, if you'd like to see that video, because I'll, I'll, I'll release it. But anyway, um, on the way back out of the place, because it was such a steep section, I was really concerned about getting out of it. Um, I put it into enduro mode and I tell you what, the, the differences on, on how the bike feels, it's, it's, you can, 
noticeably feel the difference when when you put it into enduro mode and um, it seems a little bit more stable and rather having abs and i'm sure there'll be a lot of people there leaving the comments in now um it, obviously in relation to you know disabling your abs when you're off-road um but you'll, you'll notice a big difference um when you have it in the enduro mode Because the uh, the height of the bike is obviously uh, is is quite high. When you are mounting and you need to stand up, you've got the benefit there of standing on the pegs and you've got a good seating position. This is one thing I like about the BMW, uh, um, as I say, the F800 is the seating position. Because my back is nice and straight, my arms are nice and comfortable. With the uh, Adventure bike, it has got slightly higher. Um, you've got the handlebar rises as standard, uh, so you've got that nice kind of benefit. When you are reaching everything is comfortable um my shoulders tend to take a lot of uh um what's it um take a lot of strain strain on my shoulders so it's probably just my posture i'm trying to improve that um i'm trying to exercise a bit more try and get my back muscles kind of firmed up a bit uh to try and reduce that particularly when i do my longer rides but um you can see here by standing up um the, the foot pegs themselves are nice and wide um, on my GS650, they had these little slim pegs, um, and uh, they were crap. <laughs> so I replaced them. They were a lot better to, to stand up on, a little bit more comfortable. Um, I've taken the rubber pads out. The rubber pads weren't in the spike already. So, you know, yes, there is a bit of vibration coming through the pedals when you are riding, but it's, it's nothing really. But uh, you can see when I'm standing up, that is the position I want. I'm looking forward. Um, I'm comfortable. Uh, confidence, I obviously bend my knees when I have to. And dismount. When removing uh, the, the seat of the bike, um, obviously you need your main key. There's, you'll see there's a key slot here. It's a simple twist mechanism. So you twist forward, pop the seat up, and it's as simple as that. Right, the, the seat itself, when you flip it over, contains a standard BMW toolkit, which comes with every bike. You can see it here. Um, depending on what territory you're in, you'll also get a first aid kit, which is what's missing there. Uh, that is the standard toolkit. You'll see it's a simple spanner, then there's a screwdriver. That's my GS uh, F800 GS manual, and my service book uh, history is located there, and that's, obviously, you can see there the clips. That's exactly where it goes. It's handy. I don't have to worry about it. When I take the bike in for servicing, it's there. I don't need to worry about where I put it. And if I ever need anything to take off the front wheel or the rear wheel, I can just refer to the manual. It's simple, straightforward, and easy to understand. Putting the seat back, again, pretty straightforward. You've got to put the rear clips in at the back here first, which is exactly what we're going to do now. Um, so simply just drop it in like that. Make sure the, the clips at the back are in first. And then push down. And just check the seat that is the seat is firm and voila simple as that you don't need to uh, leave a key in there and then clip it out and then take uh, it so what i was saying there isn't much room in the top case i put everything back in so let's take a look and see how much room we have so that's it that's all the, the room i have there's probably enough there for a uh, let's just say a uh, loaf of bread and maybe a packet of chips and maybe a cool drink something like that but that is ready to go as it is top case closed snap Right, so that's uh, that's it in relation to the walk around. I've explained some of the some of the uh, features of the actual bike. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take it for a ride, uh, see how the bike, or you know, you might uh, get more of an experience. I, I currently ride it all the time, so there might be some things that you want to watch out for, or or kind of notice in relation to something there that you've seen. Um, so we're going to take it for a ride on the road and uh, see how we get on. Need to uh, mount and we're going to get going. There is a uh, off-road track which we're going to take. It's going to loop around and we'll join the tarmac and then we'll take it for a bit of a drive uh, right on the tarmac. So let's get going. All right, let's hold out the center stand. Ignition on. Neutral. Uh, like I said, those lights will be flashing for a bit. Turn off the auxiliary lights. And then we'll get uh, mixed going. at the moment, but uh, no rain yet. 
this is a gravel section here so we're gonna just stop here we're gonna switch on the enduro mode right so we got enduro we're gonna press this here there we go and we'll wait for a few seconds now we've got enduro mode active and uh, we're going to get ready to go now so enduro mode is going to essentially give us uh, adjust the bike accordingly and give us a little bit more leeway when we're, uh, when we're uh, riding on uh, loose gravel so the bike feels a little bit more kind of fluid because uh, we've got the Enduro mode on. Put the visor down, there's bugs and that flying around here. Nice and stable. Okay, watch out for these kind of blind corners here. They're whacked with a <laughs> with a branch. Yeah, we have to keep it going. Just going over a bridge here. We're, going, we're keeping it in second gear. The handguards will uh, keep our hands protected here. Gotta watch out for the slippy stuff here. Yeah, Jesus. It's a nice little section this. <laughs> Gonna hit with trees and all kinds. There we go. Slip on the rear wheel. For a sec. Oh, we're well, on a bit of tarmac here. More trees. <laughs> okay, it looks like that's the extent of the gravel here, and we'll probably be coming up to, onto the main road here. We'll keep the Enduro mode uh, engaged at the moment just to see if. If there's anything, anything different I feel, we're going to come up to the main road here. That's about to the extent of the off-road that we have here at the moment um, around where I live. Yep, we're going to be coming onto the main road here. And then uh, let's have a look, I might go left here. Okay, I'm going to... Okay, so to engage the mode again, just press mode. Tap it again, and it go let the road flash. And we're ready to rock Electronic uh, suspension. I'm going to tap it down. You'll see there it says normal, sport, and comfort. So obviously that's the normal mode. And but we got sport, which will firm up the uh, suspension, uh, the mono, the, the mono shock. So it'll uh, give us a much sort of firmer ride. I can feel it already on the back. Coming up to a bridge here, and then we're going to swap it over to comfort. So obviously, it'll uh, reduce the amount of bumps that we feel on the back shock. Uh, this was the road that I was telling you about earlier about the stability control that um, I was I say flying down here but I was doing the necessary speed come around the corner and then there's a stop street um, just I wouldn't say just in front of me but just down the way so first thing I did obviously was engage the brakes both rear and front and you can feel the bike kind of adjusting and I, man it's a, it's a 
it's a fantastic feeling to know that when you need to stop, this bike's going to do it. You feel that nice bit range there, about four or five thousand off, yeah. I think the uh, the torque rating is about five five seven fifty. So you just get that uh, sweet spot as you're going through the gears. So about 3,000 RPM, 4,000, 4,200. just seems that once you get over that five six thousand rpm range just seems to taper out so there we go we're uh, we're in fifth gear at the moment at four thousand as I said four thousand five thousand is ideal we just came from there okay so we're at max uh, we're at fifth gear and then sixth gear just really smooth when you're going through the clutch and you're changing gears uh, it, it really is magic I just love that third gear. 3,000, 4,000 RPM, it's got such a nice pull. How you doing everybody uh, just got home now um, obviously this ends the uh, review uh, the long-term uh, review on this bike um, you know some really positive uh, things on it the fuel consumption is really good the comfort level on the bike is just fantastic uh, the ride height is good uh, some issues with the with the weight uh, especially when um, you kind of parked you're getting on the bike as I said I've dropped it a couple of times based on that but overall the positives have far outstrip the negatives uh, in relation to this bike the options, the, the spec on the bike is just fantastic. I'm really delighted that with that. Uh, and especially just, re, uh, I would say recently, but obviously upgrading the, uh, the headlight to a much more modern LED headlight has made uh, the world a difference in relation to its looks. Uh, the engine is superb. The engine sound I love. Um, the fuel tank range is just fantastic. And like I said, the fuel consumption figures I'm getting are just mind blowing. Um, you know, even with the 21 inch wheel on the bike as well, I haven't really had any issues. I know some people say it's more suited to more off-road, but uh, the comfort level of the bike is still is still very good. And I don't see a disadvantage of having a 21 inch front wheel. Um, the ABS, the uh, stability control systems are just fantastic, especially when you need them. Um, some people say it's better to have them than to not need them, than to, than to uh, want them and not have them. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't fault it. Uh, the bike itself hasn't cost me much um, in relation to all the servicing that, and uh, that, is, that has been done on it. Nothing major is broken on the bike. Um, I know eventually the tires will probably have to get done. The tires at the moment, there's still plenty of, plenty of tread on there. Uh, so, you know, they don't really need replacing at the moment. The brakes are all fine. The clutch is good. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, really, <laughs> there's really no issues with the bike. Uh, I'm delighted to have the sort of spec on, uh, of, of bike, so I'll probably be keeping this for a very long time. I just don't see, uh, you know, if you look at what are you going to replace it with, and I'm sure it's probably all the same uh, with you guys out there as well, you're probably thinking, what do you replace this machine with? And um, yes, you've got the modern tech of all the new ones with the TFT screens. I'm not too fussed about that at the moment. I've got my uh, screen or my the holder there for my phone, and I can run everything, my music to navigation. Uh, can all be done through there anyway but um you know for what you get with this bike you're not going to be disappointed but um, if there's any questions you may currently have please post them down below um please like comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notifications bell uh for further for further content and again thanks so very much for watching um i hope you've learned a bit more about the f800 gs uh, adventure and uh, i'll see you all in the next video